we come back, a hands-on guide to help children of all ages make friends and keep them more Wellness Wednesday after this. We all want our kids to thrive and have friends, but sometimes children lack important social skills necessary to form and keep relationships. Seeing that can really hurt our hearts and leave us wondering how to help. In the new book, Why Will No One Play With Me, author Caroline McGuire offers parents real life functional solutions at all different levels. Welcome. Thanks Thank for you. being here. So, you know, it is painful when, you're, when your child is suffering or seems like they're having difficulty having a social circle. Um, how do you know for sure that your child needs some help around this? So a lot of parents ask me that question and part of it is that we're all trying to figure out what's going on. So one of my litmus tests is if your child cannot make new friends, right? We all go to different workplaces. We go to different places in life where we have to meet and greet new people. The other is, is your child persistently left out? You know, they are constantly sort of the one excluded, the one left out, the one invisible or ignored. And in the book, I list seven things that everyone needs to be able to do to fit in and be social. And if you look at those seven things, things like reading the room, meeting people halfway, mm -hmm. being adaptive, if your child can't do that in an age appropriate way or your right. teen, then you want to think about giving them some help so that they can and they have choices. How do you start to talk to a child about this and when should that happen? I love the idea of having conversations in little snippets instead of it being one big epic conversation, <laughs> right. right? That they'll never forget. And I Will Know Play With Me gives you scripts and guides. And one great way to start is just to talk about friendship. Not to say, hey, you have a social problem, but oh. to say, who are you playing with these days? What would you like to change? What do you want from friendship? You know, what would, what would it look like if you had sort of your perfect picture? And use the open question technique in the book to kind of get more information right. and make it not a big deal but something that you in a collaborative way are talking about with your child whenever. And when you do this with the open question it's important to really listen at that point right and think about what your child is telling you. Yes it's important to listen and it's also important to sort of honor their ahas whatever they're thinking maybe you don't love it you know but it's there that's right. their truth. Right. Um, and some kids have a hard time opening up, whether it's to their parents or anybody else. The open question thing helps. Is there anything else we can do to, to make it more comfortable? Absolutely. So a lot of kids have trouble opening up. And one reason is this is hard for them. And it's kind of embarrassing for them. So a couple tips are um, if they're really um, reluctant and they shrug or something, ask them, what does that shrug mean? Mm -hmm. um, offer them a buffet of options. You know, do you not want to go to the dance because you're anxious or because you don't know anyone there? Um, and then also ask them four things they never want you to say again, right? Four things that trigger them or make them really annoyed. And you kind of own that maybe you'll change a little bit and then maybe they'll open up a little bit more. And the last thing is what's in it for them. A lot of times we see the big picture, the long-term implication, they don't, right? Maturity comes in here. So what is it that they want and where can we fit that into this picture? Give me an example of how that so would work. So maybe they want to be allowed more freedom, right? Maybe you talk about that and what expectations you have around that. And you say to them, but we need to be able to talk about these hard things more. And when we talk, I need you to engage more, right? So we kind of meet each other halfway. Right. Um, the other thing is uh, sometimes kids really want us to um, you know, really stop talking about this stuff. <laughs> and we really have to sort of say, is there a way we could do this that would make you more comfortable, but I really want to be able to talk to you. Um, and, and this is why it's a little snippet conversation. Right. It's not one big epic. It's in the car, when the door opens a little bit and maybe they've had a frustrating day socially, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. step in and we have a little conversation and then if we feel like we need to let it go, we let it go a little bit. Let's talk about what kind of mindset we need as parents to okay. do this because if your child is hurting, if they're not making friends, if they are feeling left out, obviously you feel bad, you hurt also. Um, you may think the other kids are being mean, you're not sure what's going on. How do you get yourself in a good, calm, constructive place? I think 
when you think of this as everyone is working on something, it's a little less scary. A lot of parents are very scared because this is something that they didn't anticipate having to yeah. work on. But if you think about it, our brains do certain things well and easily and then other things not as well. So your kid might be a genius at robotics and Legos and this is hard for them. Right. And you know, we want to think of this a little, little bit less scary, right? And then also we have to be calm. So if you're in a bad mood don't go there right mm -hmm. don't add this to you know an already right. tense situation and also maybe find some systems of support a girlfriend family members who get it and who are willing to support you and kind of hear from you how the struggle is is affecting yeah, you because it's real that it's it, real it, you mentioned um, before we went on the air that there there aren't a lot of places to go especially for mild to medium problems of of socializing and so your book is really you're finding meeting a need that families have tell me a little bit more about how you realize that so when I started working with children 15 years ago and teens I had the realization that if you are a parent whose child is struggling and they're not getting school services for instance there really is nowhere to go and you don't have a playbook and the information that professionals have you might not necessarily have or if you even are getting support what do you do at home how do you bridge so there's really a, a big gap there for mm -hmm. millions of parents and the idea behind why will no one play with me is that I'm giving them a very jargon free user friendly way to help a shy kid, a kid who was great, but now they're in a sixth grade without any of their friends. Right. And They've changed you, schools. And you don't who know knows? what to do. So it's really meant for any child or teen. It, you don't, you know, necessarily need a diagnosis. And the good news is there's hope. You can use these strategies and make this better. This doesn't have to be the way it is. I've seen it hundreds of times. And even in the past few weeks, I've had parents write me that things are getting better. That is so awesome. Thank you so much. We Thank appreciate you. you.